We could all see it coming, during the second presidential debate way back in the fall of 2016, Anderson Cooper pressed Trump on his braggartly claim that he sexually assaulted women and that his celebrity status gave him the entitlement to do so. Trump eventually said that the brag was nothing but locker room talk and that no such assaults ever took place. Maybe if he had never told that lie, the women he actually did assault wouldn't have started lining up to tell the truth. Because they have. The New York Times broke a damning story of two such women on recently. It told the creepy details of a vegamaniac who lived out the stories he told to Howard Stern and Billy Bush and reflected the disgusting fantasies he helped create in a number of Playboy videos. You can read the original story in the New York Times here. Being the bully Trump is, however, he thought he could strong arm the New York Times into retracting the story by threatening a huge lawsuit. According to the Times, Donald J. Trump threatened to sue the New York Times for libel in response to an article that featured two women accusing him of touching them inappropriately years ago, but the newspaper defended its reporting and told Mr. Trump's lawyer that we welcome the opportunity to have a court set him straight. The Times was going to have none of his bullying tactics and shot back with one of the most powerful responses to a lawsuit threat we have ever heard. The Times stood by the article, We Stand by the Story, which falls clearly into the realm of public service journalism, Eileen Murphy, a spokeswoman for The Times, said in a statement. David McCraw, vice president and assistant general counsel of The New York Times, followed up in a letter to Mr. Kasowitz and said that the article would not be retracted. The women quoted in our story spoke out on an issue of national importance, indeed, an issue that Mr. Trump himself discussed with the whole nation watching during Sunday night's presidential debate, Mr. McCraw wrote. It would have been a disservice, not just to our readers, but to democracy itself to silence their voices. Mr. McCraw also made the case that the crux of a libel claim is that a person's reputation has been damaged. However, Mr. Trump has repeatedly boasted in public about his non-consensual sexual touching of women, Mr. McCross said. If that's not clear, let me summarize. The Times said that libel could not possibly be a factor in this situation because Trump's reputation was already down the toilet. Brilliant comeback, and kudos to the New York Times for having the guts to stand up to such nonsense.